Big shout out to Sporting Icon, best channel out there. Okay, so the WBC have released their new rankings for the month of May. Better late than never. Now, this will kind of follow on from the previous video where I'm talking about the WBC's ambition about potentially having an eight-man tournament to crown a new WBC World Heavyweight Champion. If, of course, Tyson Fury vacates the belt, but as I said in that video, I think they should do that tournament anyway to become the new mandatory WBC Diamond Champion, however, okay? So go check out that previous video. Now, each and every month, I go through all the sanctioning bodies, the heavyweight division predominantly, of course, and point out all the changes compared to the previous month, see what fights have recently happened, what fights have uh, got coming up, what fights have been made, try and justify some of their rankings. And of course, give you an overview at the end as to what I think about that particular rankings for that month, okay? So in this one, when we're talking about the WBC, listen, nobody else here on YouTube is doing this consistently each and every month the way that I do. You're a boxing fan, yes? Click that subscribe button, absolutely free. You'll love it over here. Now, the top 15 will go as such for the month of May. The champion, of course, is Tyson Fury, still the WBC World Heavyweight Champion. Of course, he also holds the ring magazine as well as. Number one, Deontay Wilder. Number two, Joe Joyce. Number three, Josie Parker. Number four, Frank Sanchez. Number five, Andy Ruiz Jr. Number six, Arsenbeck Makhmadov. Number seven, Dillian White. Number eight, Luis Ortiz. Number nine, Tony Yoka. Number 10, Otto Wallin. Number 11, Robert Hellenius. Number 12, Michael Hunter. Number 13, Philip Herkovich. Number 14, Azure Cabiel. And number 15, Martin Bacoli. Now, before we move on, one name that has been released from the top 15 is Daniel Dubois. Does it really make any difference? Not really. He's got that WBA regular World Heavyweight Championship fight against Trevor Bryan coming up. So nothing to do with WBC anyway. No reason for him to be ranked in the top 15 of WBC. Okay. Now, one thing to point out as well is that clearly, even though they've only just released last night their new rankings for the heavyweight division, they haven't factored in yet this past weekend's fight between Tony Yoka and Martin Bacoli, where, of course, Martin Bacoli dominated Tony Yoka. So that will be pretty evident in next month's rankings, where Tony Yoka will no longer have his number nine position and Martin Bacoli will no longer have his number 15 position. So we'll have to wait and see whereabouts they are ranked next month. Okay. Now, there has been a quite a few changes. Quite a few fighters have moved up. Quite a few fighters have moved down. Of course, the new insert into the top 15 is Dillian White. Previously, of course, he was a WBC interim one heavyweight champion. And of course, he fought Tyson Fury. He lost that fight. So he gets inserted back into the top 15 and doesn't have his interim champion status anymore. Okay. So number seven, is that a fair position for Dillian White? Now, I've kind of briefly touched on it in the last video talking about the eight-man tournament. Is it a fair position? Ultimately, it doesn't really matter, especially if they hold the eight-man tournament. So that top eight that you're seeing right there, if they could have a tournament style with those eight, makes no difference whether you're ranked number one, number three, number five, or number eight. Makes absolutely no difference. Now, you could look at it a couple of ways. You could say, well, why is he behind, say, Joseph Parker? Dylan White has defeated a Joseph Parker. Well, again, a lot of that is down to recent form. In Dylan White's last three fights, he has lost twice. Granted, one of them, he did avenge that loss against Alexander Kovetkin. So that should pretty much put it back on an even kill, which of course it did, which is how he got his interim status back. Okay, But of course, he lost to Tyson Fury. Any shame in losing Tyson Fury? Of course not. Tyson Fury is an exceptional boxer. No shame in that whatsoever. But we couldn't look at it and say, but number one, Deontay Wilder. Why is he number one? Now, I've said this over the past couple of months, or a few months even really. Why is he still number one? Firstly, he, he hasn't had a fight since he lost back-to-back -back fights with Tyson Fury. He hasn't come back yet. He hasn't announced his retirement and he hasn't said he's going to continue. I know the WBC president, Rizzo Suleiman, believes that he will continue. But still, should he be number one? Now, I think Wilder, listen, Wilder has the, one of the worst title runs in the history of the sport. Okay, he's fought nothing but cab driver, let's be honest. Okay, but he is former champion. So he does deserve respect from that perspective. Should he be number one? No, he shouldn't be number one. 
He shouldn't be. Okay, but he has a very good relationship with the WBC. They love Deontay Wilder. Okay, that's why they allowed him to have all those title defenses against who it was that he fought for the longest time. Okay, but at the same time, he has come off back to back knockout losses. In the second fight with Tyson Fury, he didn't even land a glove on Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury battered him from pillar to post to the point his team had to throw in the towel. But yes, in the last fight with Tyson Fury, where he did get knocked out later on in the fight in round 11, was it? Where, yeah, he did actually drop Tyson Fury down on two occasions. But that was in one round. He had one good round in that entire fight. He got battered for, for the entire fight. But still, it's the result that is important. So, of course, when we compare it to Dillian White, did Tyson Fury batter Dillian White? No. These guys didn't really land on each other. It was a very, very subpar fight. But Tyson Fury did pull out a huge uppercut, okay? That's the talking point of that fight, which is a shame, really, because obviously there's six rounds to talk about, not too much else to talk about in that one. But still, does it really matter that Wild is ranked number one and D. White's ranked number seven? No, it doesn't really matter. As long as they end up doing the tournament, that's fine. At least that way, you go through the tournament structure. Whoever comes out of the smoke at the end, after their three fights, deserves their number one position, or the title shot, or, be, or get the vacant belt, however it works out. So from that perspective, I, um, I have no issues. Now, number 13, Filip Herkovic, he's dropped down by five positions. Five. What did he do wrong to get dropped five positions? Now, he was supposed to fight Zinni Zhang, and that was for the vacant IBF mandatory position. That fight was meant to take place on the Canelo Alvarez and Dimitri Bivol undercard. That fight didn't happen. As we know, and it's been, been well documented, Filip Perkovic, his father, unfortunately, passed away. Okay, so his training wasn't going how it should be. They pulled and postponed the fight, so that fight is going to be rescheduled. So is that reason enough to drop him down five positions? I would say not. I would say not. But, hey, they're all going to have their reasons. Who are we to argue with them? But fights that have been made, obviously number nine, Tony Yoka, and number 15, Mark Bacoli, as I said, them two, their rankings are going to change next month, okay? Other fights that are, that all, if I can speak, other fights that will be coming up, number two versus number three, Joe Joyce versus Joseph Parker. That fight will be coming up in due course. Fantastic. And number two versus number three, again, that fits quite nicely into the eight-man tournament, doesn't it? Likewise, with number five, Andy Ruiz Jr., and number eight, Luis Ortiz. That, again, will fit in nicely to the tournament structure if, of course, that's what they go ahead with. Personally, I would remove Luis Ortiz from that position and put Martin Bacoli in there. Personally, because Martin Bacoli has a better resume than Tony Yoga. No, than Luis Ortiz. Okay? I don't know what's matter with me today. Um, so, but again, because the Ortiz Ruiz fight has already been made, why not just keep the top eight? Okay. But either way, we'll have to wait and see what happens going forward with that tournament structure. Michael Hunter has been dropped down three positions. Why has Michael Hunter been dropped three positions? His last fight was a draw against Jerry Forrest. Most of us who watched that fight believe Jerry Forrest won that fight, and Michael Hunter was very lucky to get a draw in that fight. Michael Hunter just wasn't at the races. He wasn't like he would normally be. We all know that Michael Hunter is a fantastic fighter and certainly a top 15 fighter, no doubt. But of course, he does have a fight coming up with Huey Fury. Now, that was meant to have been announced this past weekend on the Boxer Show. I didn't see it if it was announced, but I believe there's still something to iron out and that that's going to be sorted out in due course. But Huey Fury, Michael Hunter will be coming up in due course. Other fights... There are no other fights that have been made out of these top 15. Um, personally, I'd like to see number 10 and number 11, so Otto Wallin and Robert Hellenius. No reason in the world why them two couldn't have a fight for the European heavyweight title. Why not? It's an interesting fight. It's a fight where both guys have been looking pretty good recently. Of course, you've got Otto Wallin. He's got a very good win on his resume with a dominant Brazil, or a decent win at least. And you've got Robert Hellenius, again, decent wins with, um, against Adam Kalnaki. 
So put them two in together. Again, that could be on a PBC show. We know Otto Wallen, his last couple of fights, all barring his last one against Sokolowski, but previous to that were on PBC shows, even though, of course, he is promoted by Dimitri Salita. But there have been, or he has been on some PBC shows. As has Robert Alanius. His last, what, three or four fights have been on PBC. So it's somewhat of an in-house fight. Officially not, but it kind of is. That fight makes all the sense in the world. Why not? But other than that, no other changes, a couple of positions up, a couple of positions down, but nothing really to shout out, out about. So my overall thoughts on the top 15 for WBC for this month, they're not too bad. They're not too bad. Now, each and every month and each and every time I do a video on the sanctioning bodies, people will ask, well, where's this person? Well, where's that person? For example, on this one for the WBC, people will say, well, where's Anthony Joshua? Why is he not ranked there? Why is Alexander Usyk not ranked here? Again, not everybody knows these answers, okay? So Alexander Usyk, he's not ranked here because he's champion of other sanctioning bodies. Anthony Joshua is not ranked here because he hasn't been paying the WBC sanctioning fee because he doesn't need to because he's got that rematch with Alexander Usyk. Again, for a different sanctioning bodies. Okay, so that's why them two are not ranked here. But again, of course, there's going to be quite a few other fighters in and around the world that you could say, well, maybe they should be here or maybe they should be there. But we're never going to agree on the positions of any sanctioning body are we but i think overall when you compare this one to all the other sanctioning bodies bar in the ring magazine of course i think the wbc have it a lot closer to what a lot of us would have it i think if we're being fair the wba are certainly the worst drop your thoughts below click thumbs up subscribe catch you on the next video